This is a quick video of our fix law of diffusion. Now, hopefully, you've seen previous videos where, you, where diffusion is explained, where if you have a high concentration of something, it will go to a low concentration. Fick's law of diffusion describes that. So let's say we had some area, and what he said is he said, well, he basically just measured, whoops, he measured the number of A particles crossing this area per time. So he had the number of A particles crossing an area per time. And he called this flux. And that is equal to J A Z. So A is just in what well, the A just represents whatever's crossing it. And the Z what well, actually means going in this direction, in the z direction. So it's the flux of A in the z direction. And he actually was able to make an equation for it, where it was the negative diffusion coefficient of A, B. So this is A and this is, that's B, times change in concentration of A per, per change in the z direction. So then, another way of writing that is the negative diffusion coefficient of A into B times delta C over delta Z, where delta Z, delta Z is just equal to, let's say if we start right there, this would be Z1, so, and this would be maybe B Z2. So, Z2 minus Z1. And this, this D right here actually means an infinitely small area. So if you actually move the delta Z2 maybe right there, an infinitely small change. But don't, don't worry too much about that. It just means, is, is Z a, a positive or negative number? And for our case, it will always be a positive number positive number. What about this DC? Well DC means, well C is just the concentration, so this is a high, A is in a high concentration, concentration, and it's going to a low concentration, concentration. So we'll call this C one and C two. So then what is delta C? Well delta C is just equal to C two minus C one. And this is a high concentration or a large concentration. So this is actually gonna be the neg the delta C is actually going to be a negative number. And that's actually why there's a negative right here. So if you have, if you have a, a negative D, DAB times a negative number over a positive number, you get a positive number. So that is the purpose of this negative, is so that the flux of A in the Z direction is positive. So what exactly is this DAB? Well, it's actually unique to the two particles. If maybe B was bigger, it would be different. If A was bigger, it would be different. You can't say, I know the diffusion coefficient of oxygen. You have to say, I know the diffusion coefficient of oxygen into B. Or, I know the diffusion coefficient of oxygen into nitrogen. You cannot say you know the diffusion coefficient of oxygen. You need to know what it's diffusing into. So that is what D represents, or DAB. It represents the diffusion coefficient, and it's unique to each one. It actually is what gives the the speed of how something, how fast something is diffusing. This is a speed, you can think of it. And it actually has units of, so DAB, and actually we can just say D, the diffusion coefficient, is actually area, per second. 
And that seems a little bit confusing, and I mean, for good reason, because how can you have an area per time? We know we can have like a distance per time, and that's usually what we think of speed, but why is that area? Well, it's actually due to this delta C, delta Z. Where delta C, delta C is the number of ions, or usually moles, per volume, or centimeters cubed. And then that's multiplied by delta Z, and delta Z is a length, so that's just centimeters. So then we have moles per centimeter times the inverse of length, or the inverse and the change in the length, centimeters, and that will give us moles per centimeter to the fourth. And that's really odd, so that's why they actually have this, where this is actually centimeters squared per second. So now if we multiplied this by d, by these units, we would get moles per centimeter to the fourth times these units times centimeters, centimeters squared per second. So this, this four cancels out that two and that now becomes a two. So then we get moles, moles per centimeter squared per second. And that is what we said flux was where, again, moles is just another way of calculating the, calculating the number of something is. So that's just the number of something per area, area, time. And again, that's flux. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, and again, you may, it is possible, well, usually you just look up what the diffusion coefficient is to get your calculations, you would I would highly doubt that you'd be asked to find the diffusion coefficient. Uh, you'd have to use different type of equations, but usually it's something that you're given and you look up, and you and you calculate the flux. And I said that was flux per area, or that was the number of something per area per time. So what if we wanted to know how many ions were traveling through this area? Well, what you would do is, you would multiply the flux, J, times the area, and that would get you the number of things, or the moles, per second. So if you maybe had a bag of chips, a bag of chips, and you had oxygen, and you, wanted, and you knew what the flux of oxygen into it, into the bag was, but that's just a small area. So flux again is just is just the number of things per area time. So get to get the total number of things going through it, and maybe let's say five seconds, you would multiply it by the total area of the bag, or a flux times a times the time time is equal to the number of things going into that bag going into it. So it's just the moles of something going into that bag. So that is a fixed first law of diffusion. Again, the only thing I would add is that, is that this, this little d right here represents an infinitesimally small change, but again you can just think of it as delta c over delta z. They just mean infinitesimally small. So that is the fixed first law of diffusion.